Hey party people, Techno back again with another lock video. In the previous few videos, we've been focused on looking at smaller brass bodied padlocks for low security applications. That all really started with the Master Lock 140, pointing out its faults and then trying to find, at least in my sample size of locks, do we have better options? And I think it's pretty clear that we do. But if we expand that scope a little bit beyond just brass bodied padlocks, we actually have some better options even, I think. And one of those is a lock that we've looked at previously, such as the American Lock Series 1100. So just as a refresher on this one, you have a five pin core full of security pins, serrated spools and serrated pins. In this particular one, again, we gutted this in a previous video. The core is also removable. So you can repin this, rekey this. You, if you had a number of these locks, you would be able to use one key across all of them if you wanted to do something along those lines. We also have a dual ball bearing locking mechanism here, so that's going to eliminate any possibility of shimming those shackles. Uh, and as we saw, we had one brass bodied padlock that appeared to have a mitigation for shimming, um, and the other ones were still susceptible to those, those shimming attacks. Now we have an aluminum body here, so keeping things lightweight in the context of these low security applications. I don't think that this is an issue, no more of an, no more of an issue than brass body padlock. Um, if I'm overlooking something there, somebody can correct me in the comments though. And apart from that, yeah, that's really it. I think this would be an ideal kind of lock to use in the kind of applications we spoke about in the context of those brass bodied padlocks. But we can even take things up another step from here with something like the Packlock 90A Pro. So this is a very similar lock to the Series 1100 aluminum body. But in this case, this model actually has a seven pin core. So we're really increasing that key space, um, the pick resistance just in terms of extra pins to pick. Also full of security pins with serrated and spool pins. We still have that dual ball bearing locking mechanism. And <laughs> notice that that shackle really fires out of this lock. Uh, very strong spring on that. And apart from those, there is another advantage here that is, um, aside from the American lock there, the pack lock has an advantage over the American lock in another way. And that is that the American lock design has a commonly known bypass that has been mitigated and in more recent locks, or at least it should be. And that is through the use of a metal plate that goes at the back of the core and prevents somebody from reaching through the core with a tool to contact the actuator and, and potentially turn it. Now that can still be exploited if you punch through those metal discs, but those metal discs as a mitigation make that much harder to do. However, the pack lock design completely eliminates that bypass possibility. So that's another, um, that's another check in favor of this lock. So let's go ahead and see what's inside of this. But first to do that, we're going to have to pick it open and see what it takes to get through this seven pin core. Now the keyway here is still pretty open. Uh, there are There's some wording here, but it's not going to obstruct your ability to get to those pins. Although the way this is shaped can make it slightly awkward to get some top of the keyway tensioners in there. I'm going to use this top of the keyway tensioner uh, from Covert Instruments in 40 thousandths. This is actually from the Covert Companion Turner expansion, however, not in the Covert Companion, and that's uh, subject for another video. So we're gonna fit that right in the top, and then I'm gonna go to my standard Sparrows Tron pick in 25 thousandths, and let's go ahead and get started on this guy. Pin one, binding, and we got a little click out of pin one. Um, actually, so when I did that, I was reaching past that. I was actually on pin two. So let's go ahead and reset those just so I can be more clear on that. Pin one, we have these shallow clicks on pin one, or at least what I call shallow clicks, indicating to me a serrated pin. Pin two, we have a slight click out of pin two and that dropped pin one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reset that one. On to pin three, light click out of pin three. Pin four is binding, not moving. Um, not sure that that's binding though, so I'm going to move past that, not ready to commit to that one yet. On to pin five, we have a light click out of pin five. Pin six, subtle click out of pin six, subtle out of seven, and you'll see that we went right into a false set after hitting pin seven there. 
Coming back to the front, pin one is good, pin two, good, three, four is still, feels rock solid, pin five, feels like we might have some counter rotation on pin five. So let's try to get that set there. I have a feeling that that's going to drop a lot of these other pins when I finally get that click out of that one. And there they went. Now we did get a nice solid click out of five. We dropped everything up front though, so let's go ahead and take care of that. Coming back up to the front. Got that click out of two, one, three, Five is still good, back to six. Click out of six and seven. Click out of seven. So what are we missing here? Oh, I think it's pin one, wasn't fully set. There we go. Getting pin one fully set, we have an open. Cool. So let's go ahead and get this and see what's inside. Not too bad a pick, seven pins, definitely spools and serrateds in there. And to drop this core out, we are just going to remove this Allen screw that is down the shackle hole. Drop that plate out, there's the core, there's one of our ball bearings, so we'll have to put all of that back together. And you can see, maybe you can see down there, that there really is no actuator because the actuator is built into the back of this lock. That's what prevents the bypass. You can't reach through the core to contact the actuator because the actuator is integral to the plug here. Uh, let's go ahead and get some pinning stuff here, a little pinning tray. And we'll get the snap ring off the back of the lock. Something else I appreciate about the design of this core is that there is a spot uh, designed for the C-clip or the snap ring to fit into so that it doesn't freely rotate. It's held in place there. Just little quality of life things. And let's get a follower. should probably get something to to shim this and kind of bridge that gap but let's just go for it and see what happens all right no disaster yet so there is our seven pins in that plug let's go ahead and see what we have inside And one is a serrated. We got that spring there. Pin two, we have a spool, just a standard spool, not a serrated spool. Pin three is a serrated. Four is a serrated. Five, standard spool. Six, it's a serrated. And then seven, 
7 we have a standard and that's going to help keep that core um, situated nice and firm so that there's not a lot of slop and shaking around from having these uh, serrated spins or serrated and spool pins all lined up. This keeps everything pretty well locked in place. So that is our core, a bunch of springs and stuff there. And let's see what's in what we have for key pins. So pin one, standard, pin two, standard, three, standard, four, is another standard, five, a very short standard, six, another very short standard, and finally seven, getting away from us there is yet another standard. So there you go. That's the Packlock 90A Pro. Very good candidate for any of those low security applications. Um, nice pinning. Right, not a lot to complain about here, really. Um, I think it's a pretty solid and competent lock in that respect and a great lock to practice picking on as well. Uh, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope this was enjoyable and uh, educational to some degree. Until next time, take it easy. Catch you later.